Hello everyone. I'm doing a video today on Aisha Altrugal. You may have seen a slightly older video of mine called How I Got Into Gaming. And I explained in that video the importance of the game Atelier Aisha to me. Now I'm very emotionally attached to the character of Aisha. And today, I finally, after many years of trying, received the figure of Aisha herself. It was quite a journey to get there. And I just wanted to tell you the story because it gives a bit of closure, I suppose. Uh, I've been very casually collecting some figurines associated with games or anime that I like particularly uh, over the last few years. Uh, but I, I'm pretty much finished now, I think. And getting Aisha is sort of the, the most wonderful finale for me, in a way. So I'll show you what arrived this morning. And that was a cardboard box uh, from Japan, not unusual in our household. Um, a nice sturdy box, Japanese fruit and vegetables. I think they use them quite a lot for sending stuff overseas. Inside you see is another cardboard box, an Amazon one. And the figure was um, safely stowed inside with a bit of bubble wrap so it made the long journey here safely which is important many of us have experienced um, the agonies of uh, shipping uh, damage and then the hassle of sorting it all out it's something none of us want so inside was the box of the Aisha Altugal figure itself now, a bit of background. Um, the figure was released back in 2015, so quite some time ago. I recall seeing it at the time it came out uh, here in New Zealand as well. Uh, it sold out very quickly. At the time, I wasn't collecting figures. I'd never bought a figure before. I looked at the price and was astonished and thought, oh, goodness me. Uh, and I was thinking, well, it would be awfully nice, but I just didn't take that step at the time. I then, over the years, noticed that the figure popped up occasionally uh, being sold, pre-owned sometimes, as new, on various trading sites. You know, the usual Amazon, eBay, um, Amazon Japan. And I looked at the price and I thought, gosh, I wish I had known about that because the price had jumped to quadruple what it was at release. Now, those of you who buy and collect figures will not at all be astonished about that. But to me, it was quite an eye opener. And I thought, well, that's it. I'll never be able to get Aisha now. I kept keeping an eye on certain uh, smaller retailers' sites online uh, that I knew sometimes got pre-owned figures. But somehow I felt I was jinxed about this figure because whenever I saw a listing, there was something wrong with it. Like if it was pre-owned, there was a slight fault or it came without the box or there was a chip or something or other that I thought, no, I, I wouldn't want that. Or if it was in new and pristine condition, it was often priced at something ridiculous, like around a thousand New Zealand dollars, you know. Now, as far as I'm aware, this is the only figure that was ever made of Aisha from Atelier Aisha. I have never seen another one. If there is one, uh, please let me know. I know some of you are far more experienced than I am with figures and uh, may be able to give me more background on that. 
I can tell you that the figure was manufactured by a company called Penguin Parade. Now, that didn't mean an awful lot to me, and I had to dig around a bit. They were producing items, as far as I understand it, for and under the umbrella of the Good Smile Company, a a well-known name. Basically, I would say they were a bit more of a budget type a manufacturing outfit uh, supplying certain companies like uh, Good Smile. So this is not what I would call a high-end figure from one of the really well-known uh, manufacturers. So the reason that the price went up that much can really only be explained by the fact that this is the only Aisha figure and that There was a limited number of them, and, well, it's rarity that drives up the pricing with anything. So what happened? How did I find this particular Aisha, and how did I secure her? Well, not so long ago, earlier this month, I was talking with Poodle Pa about the situation. He looked at all the figurines on top of our bookcases and said, you don't have any more space left. And I said, no, I know. I really, really wanted Aisha, but I'll never be able to get her. Uh, So he asked me what the trouble was, and I explained it to him. And I said, I'm giving up. I I just can't take it anymore looking for her. I just never seem to to find a figure that I can purchase. If I find something on eBay, well, eBay is really problematic for us in New Zealand because so many sellers and traders there do not ship to New Zealand. It's really frustrating if you see an item that you want, you're prepared to pay the price, and they just will not ship to New Zealand. Uh, Why, I don't know. We've got very good shipping connections. It's often individuals who are simply not aware of the fact that New Zealand exists. If you contact them, they say, well, I've got Australia listed. Well, that's not a lot of help to me. So... (laughs) The frustrations I endured over the years uh, brought me to the brink of wanting to give up. And Poodle Pa kind of looked at me because he knows me and he knows I just hate giving up. I just, I'm not a quitter by nature. I always say, most of you know if you've watch my videos and listen to my ramblings on the community tab, you know that I always say, never ever give up. And that's not just an empty phrase. I I really mean that, you know, that's that's really important. Poodle Pa said, is there nobody you can ask? Um, I said, well, I've contacted various um, online retailers in Japan over the years, um, shops that specialise in figures and asked them, and it just never materialised. I even had one of my followers on Twitter who happened to be living at the time in central Tokyo. Uh, He offered to go around the various small toy shops and have a look. And he actually found a figure of Aisha, and guess what? The staff was missing. Well, the staff is hugely important, of course. You know, the the figure without the staff is nothing, really. I felt I was jinxed, honestly. So I said to Poodle Pa, I think there is one more address I kept of someone I don't know at all. I just came across this small online figures shop in Japan. And he said, drop them a line, just ask. And I thought, okay. And I sent off yet another email. And to my surprise, I got a pretty quick response saying, no, they didn't have the figure, but they had a quick look. There was one available currently on the Yahoo auction site. Well, 
Some of you collecting Japanese figures will probably be familiar with the auction process in Japan. You may even have used it yourself, maybe used a proxy service to secure an item and have it shipped out. I have never done that before. That was a new process and a new experience. When the shop offered their proxy service and said, we can do the auction for you and then ship the item out if the bid is successful. I thought, uh, yeah, I don't know these people from Adam. They might just take my money and run. And they're so, I, you know, I'm the sort of person who says, what if, and I could see like 25 things that could go wrong all in within 10 seconds. I was a bit hesitant, but we had email contact and the lucky thing was that, unlike most other Japanese shops, there was an English language customer service available. So we kept exchanging emails. Um, they explained very clearly to me what the process was, it directed me to information online on how the Yahoo auctions work, and uh, detailed their charges and asked me what what my top bid would be to secure the figure. They told me what they thought was the likely top bidding range, what the figure might go for. Obviously, they would have good experience. I had done my research and their figure aligned with what I had found out was likely to be a bidding outcome. I thought, you don't know unless you try. Sometimes you just got to jump in and start paddling like mad, you know. And I paid a small deposit to secure their service. And the auction happened uh, 24 hours later. I sort of kept an eye on it. It was went past midnight, so in the end I didn't see the final outcome, but I could see what was happening up until, you know, within a couple of hours of the end. When I woke up the next morning, I had an email saying, congratulations, your bid secured the figure. And it came in at just under what the shop's estimate had be been and what my own absolute maximum top bid was going to be. So it came in slightly under, which was nice because it left room for paying for the shipping. To be honest, I thought, well, that was almost too easy. There's bound to be something else that goes wrong, you know. I transferred um, all the the remainder of the uh, charges um, from the shop's invoice the next day I had a notification that they had passed it on to the shipping service. DHL shipped it out from Tokyo on the 9th and it arrived in Auckland at the weekend, went through customs, was passed on to a regional courier service to deliver it today. When Poodle Pa brought the box in this morning, I just said... Welcome, Aisha. You're with us now. I have already um, taken the figure out and inspected it, obviously wanting to make sure that everything is okay. So that's why I'm not doing a sort of on-camera unboxing. It, it simplifies everything. So here she is, Aisha Altugal, manufactured by Penguin Parade in 2015. As I said, for me it feels a bit like I've got closure on this whole uh, Aisha um, story. I have to say, considering that she's manufactured by an outfit not with any particularly great name for figures, 
I am surprised. I think they did a really nice job. Um, the whole colour palette is beautiful. They've recreated the detail and the pastel colours very nicely. She looks very elegant, just like the illustration uh, Hidari did uh, for the game. The, this particular stance is based on one of the um, illustrations for the game. And I do love all all the little detail, you know, whether it's the, the little adornments or the, the ribbons. Uh, they've used a very light brown soft colour for her eyes, which is gives a very nice effect. She looks almost best in half profile. She even has the little hair curl there, which I thought at first was lost, but it was rattling around in the plastic casing. Uh, it's there. Uh, down to the toenails, uh, which are painted delicately. The only thing they could have done better is provide a proper customised um, base, at least with a different colour than just plain white. That would have been nice. But otherwise, I'm actually really, really delighted uh, with her. And strangely enough, it's given me a bit of a perspective on uh, figures I've got more recently, especially over the last couple of years since COVID, and then looking back to some of the older figures I got, and I sometimes bought pre-owned figures. I'm not totally sure really about the quality anymore that we get these days. I've had a few disappointments recently, especially with uh, quality assurance, uh, on, on figures, on how the parts fit together. You're paying a tremendous amount of money these days. Costs have really escalated, and, and particularly for figures. I feel hesitant about it now, and I, I'm happy that I decided uh, to call it a day. I've got enough, as I said, we're running out of space. And Aisha really is a fitting finale, I think. It's wonderful to finally have her here. It really made my day. And that's all for today. I know it isn't much of a story, but I did want to share it with you because I've had such a very, very strong response to that um, video uh, about how I got into gaming. Uh, for those of you who are interested in uh, figure collecting and, and, and the process of uh, getting them from Japan, I've put the details of the shop who assisted me um, with the auction uh, in the description below so you know if you want more info you can look it up there so it's goodbye from me and Aisha thank you very much for watching as always please keep well I'm food for dogs bye bye <laughs>